hello everyone and welcome to the beginning of the last days my name is Laurel and Tyler Thompson and uh, one of the ways that we think maybe we're in the last days is that some really crazy stuff is going on with the weather and right here in British Columbia in Canada in my province we have had the most epic battles with forest fires uh, a lot of people crying foul a lot of people saying something is going on as well with arsonists and things like that Lots of investigations going on. Danielle Smith was looking into the arsonists in Alberta. Uh, we've heard, you know, flames seeming to jump, you know, from here to way over here. And suddenly the, you know, the fires all coming together. But why are we having uh, all of these uh, very difficult things? Well, you know that I love to start my day by reading with you from my dad's Bible and he uh, loved this this word before he passed away. And so I turned to a page today. It's at the end of Ephesians and the beginning of Philippians. So just to give you a little bit of view, it's underlined, circled, uh, starred in red and blue writing all over the place. And so I'm going to just read to you from Philippians 1.6. Um, and it says, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So maybe today doesn't look so good, everybody. Maybe you're going through a real trial, but whoever has begun a good work, and that is God himself, has begun a very good work. He is going to keep on performing that work. And here we are, we're sort of all in a battle, um, a battle, that we didn't see coming. I don't know that years ago we saw that we would face uh, the 2020 pandemic, as they say. Now my dogs are having a, a fight with each other. But we didn't know that we were going to see some of the, um, I don't know, fallacies, lies, uh, complete, you know, well, the distrust that we felt for all authority and what is truly going on. And then you know, what ended up happening from that is we started doing a search on, well, what is the truth and and who's behind all of this? So I was in Alberta some time ago and people had grave concerns for what they're seeing in the air. And this was really deemed a conspiracy theory, um, you know, for quite a while that these planes were flying across and they just seemed to be, you know, all of a sudden in an afternoon, you know, you've got 30 different uh, streams left in the air after planes have flown through. Well, you would think that um, you maybe had no real legitimate proof or anything that they were maybe messing with all of it, except that there is actually in the, the government um, website regarding our laws and how Canada operates, uh, they have an agreement with the United States not to do their geoengineering within 200 miles or kilometers maybe of the border of the United States of America. Now, why would you need a law like that if you're not messing with climate? So we're in British Columbia. So I, I don't think that we often see those trails the way that they do say, you know, in um, Calgary or Edmonton, Alberta, where people have really, really complained about these kinds of things. I remember a gentleman in Red Deer, Alberta, taking me outside um, and saying, you know, look at our skies. And you could clearly see that, you know, something, you know, there was these long streams that were left there. So we begin asking, well, what is actually going on? And then we see what just took place in Maui and a lot of questions there, of which I certainly do not have the answers. But I will tell you that I'm pretty thrilled today because we have an epic guest, and his name is Dwayne Wigginton. Dwayne. Dwayne. Dane? Dane. Dane? Dane. Okay, I said it wrong. Uh, Dane Wigginton, and he is the lead researcher and administrator for the website geoengineeringwatch.org and is the executive producer for the groundbreaking climate engineering documentary, The Dimming. So if you've seen this, uh, you know that your mind has been opened and your thoughts basically are exploding into what could potentially be going on. He has a background in solar energy, was a former employee of uh, Bechtel Power Corporation and was a licensed contractor in California and Arizona. 
Dane has devoted the last 20 years of his life to constant research on the issue of covert global climate engineering operations and the effort to expose and halt them. His personal residence was featured as a cover article in the world's largest renewable energy magazine, Home Power. He manages a wildlife preserve next to Lake Shasta in Northern California. Dane has appeared in numerous films and interviews in efforts to educate the public on the extremely dire environmental health dangers that we face from the ongoing global climate intervention operation. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the show, Dane. Thank you very much for being with us today. We have so many questions about what has been going on, and so we're looking forward to hearing from you. Um, I guess you've been following what's recently gone on in Maui. That was really um, a catastrophic devastation to that to that island. Very, very closely. And what's imperative with all these incinerations that are happening around the globe, and they are indeed happening around the world and have been accelerating radically, the source of ignition is not the underlying foundation to what's occurring. It's climate engineering is setting the template for forests, towns like Lahaina, Greece, Portugal, Spain, France. We have parts of the Southern Hemisphere on fire now, even in South America in winter. We have Australians being warned that they are likely in for an even worse summer than their, what was called the, the black summer of several years ago. Uh, so again, we have this giant elephant in the equation, Laura, and you outlined it somewhat on your intro climate engineering operations that are absolutely, completely, and totally inarguable. But we have a population that doesn't want to know the truth, doesn't want to investigate the truth, wants to pretend that their government's telling them the truth about everything, including what they can see with their own eyes happening in the sky. And I'll, I'll leave it with this. We have up close film footage of these aircraft at altitude, nozzles visible, turning on and off. End of the debate. This is not condensation we're seeing in our skies. It's a sprayed particulate dispersion climate engineering elements, and those elements are highly toxic, all of which settle down through the air column, which we get to breathe. It's in our food, our water. Uh, this is nothing short of weather warfare and biological warfare. So you can confirm then with, with your incredible expertise and science that this is not a conspiracy theory. This is really going on. And how harmful is this? And why are people, why would government or anyone be doing this? I would answer that. Let me back into your question. First, why wouldn't they do this? This is the crown jewel weapon of the military industrial complex. Those who print the money, those who control governments because they print the money. We don't have so-called democratic governments. These are all puppets, both sides of the fence. Doesn't matter what political party, but this is again, the weapon which they most highly prize because they can bring populations to their knees without those populations ever even knowing they're under assault and they can blame nature. They've been doing this for decades. In the case of the US, that's how the US has military bases in so many countries around the world. We have almost 800 bases and I believe 80 countries around the world because the US can cut their flow of precipitation off, bring those countries to their knees and then force those governments to allow US occupation. So. Let me, let me back that up a little bit. After 9-11, we saw former NATO Supreme Commander Wesley Clark, General Wesley Clark. He was given a list of Middle Eastern countries that were to be targeted immediately after 9-11, a list that clearly existed before 9-11 even happened, the 9-11 event in the U.S. What happened to those countries after that? Every single one was underwent a once in 1,000 year drought, every single one of them. We have the leaders of those countries on the floor of the UN in the case of Iran stating that NATO was cutting off their precipitation. But Americans don't seem to care because the matrix media demonizes these countries because the US military machine wants the resources from these countries. So 9-11 was the new Pearl Harbor event, which they used to galvanize the American population to support whatever they wanted to do in other countries. But climate engineering, core part of that equation, same in Africa, the countries that allow US occupation there, their precipitation is cut off, those populations are brought to their knees and then forced to allow US occupation. So again, of course they're modifying the weather. And as far as the agendas, they're much more complex than that. You have actually the attempt to mask the severity of damage done to the climate. Got a little beef lying around here. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, we have That's an attempt right. to, we have attempt to mask the, the true severity done to the climate, the damage done already, by engineering events like you saw the, the snowpocalypse event 
in California this year, right? All the snow, how sensationalized it was. That's called chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. They seed clouds with endothermic reacting materials. This is These are patented processes and that causes ice to nucleate at much higher temperatures than normal and much faster than normal. So they can literally turn what should have been a rain event into a snow event. And this is no secret for anybody who's paying attention. We had the Chinese government openly announced they were doing this, engineering snowstorms. And this is in 2009. Your listeners can look this up. They can search Chinese scientists engineer snowstorm. Popular Science covered it. Uh, the Guardian, ABC, NBC, Fox News, everyone covered this. But here, if you bring it up, you're, quote, a conspiracy theorist. And that, that term, I'll leave it at this, Laura, that, that term conspiracy theorist is the final fallback of the factless and the fearful, people who don't have a clue, don't want a clue, and are as scared as they can be about what's happening in our skies. Well, it is really scary because I think that a lot of people are beginning to awaken to the fact that what you're saying and others like yourself are telling us the facts and the truth and we can see it with our own eyes and then these weird things happen. Okay, for uh, I saw this video and I didn't know what to make of it and this person was holding um, some ice and they said that there had been snow or something and then they were they were putting out like a hot lighter or something on it and it was not melting in a normal way. Um, so I didn't know if I was being played or if that was like, a, you know, have you heard of anything like that? Certainly. But what's occurring there, and again, there's a number of factors involved, but when you have a, an artificially nucleated frozen material, dry ice is the extreme form of that. An unnaturally nucleated material, a dry ice sublimates. Sublimation means that it converts from a solid to a gas and bypasses the liquid phase. So when you have a chemically nucleated element, it tends to sublimate to a degree also. Further, we know there are polymer fibers in this frozen material. That's a part of the climate engineering operations. And we now know we have polymer fibers everywhere all over the globe. It's not just decomposing plastic waste. It's also climate engineering operations. These fibers are highly devastating to our health, to the health of everything else on the ground. When you have a frozen material that's saturated with these elements, we know we have aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, the polymer fibers I mentioned, surfactants, graphene. All of this is in our frozen material that we now call snow. It's And Laura, you've seen all the massive hail events. You, every time there's a thunderstorm, there's massive hail and huge hail. You've seen that, right? Yes, I have. So that's, again, chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. And, and why would they do this? Because they're creating a cold, dense layer of air that descends to the surface. They're lowering the temperatures in some of these regions temporarily. They're masking the severity of done to the, the climate. And it's for many causes. Again, we recognize that at geoengineeringwatch.org. We've been very, very poor stewards of the planet, the human species as a whole. We've really laid waste to the natural environment. But on top of all that, and I'm no fan of Al Gore. I want to make that clear too. the environmental groups. They're all ignoring climate engineering. That's criminal hypocrisy. So we're no friend of the environmental groups. But that being said, we've certainly not been good stewards of the planet. But on top of that, you have climate engineering operations using weather as a weapon, man playing God with the weather. And that is disabling the planet's ability to respond to the damage done. And if this continues, and this is why we're focused on this at geoengineeringwatch.org, if, if we continue on the current trajectory, none of us are going to be here much longer. And that's not my opinion. That's a statistical trajectory. It's a mathematical certainty if we remain in the current course. And I don't mean not centuries out or decades out. Statistically, we'll be lucky if we make the end of this decade because we face what is known as, it's an exponential equation. So when we have today, Laura, we have a species extinction rate that's a million and a half percent of normal. It's 15,000 times the background rate. That's a million and a half percent of normal. We're losing two to 300 species of plant, animal, and insect every single day. Uh, plankton populations down 90%, insect populations globally down 80 to 90%. This should be headlines everywhere. Nobody's touching it, just political theater in the US. Wow, okay, so would you say then that if they left the world alone and stopped doing this, that that we'd be in a much better position. Are we seeing all of these insects and all of that? Look at what's happening with the whales, right? They're doing all of this green kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden the whales are dying. Um, like, are they causing this? 
Is what is your thoughts on that? Uh, this is very important to keep in mind. It's not a this or that equation. It's a this and that equation. So we've used the oceans for a toxic waste dump. We have Fukushima water being dumped into the Pacific right now. We have many people don't know this. We have the the nuclear, the most toxic nuclear waste from the detonations in the U.S. was taken to the South Sea Islands and buried there in a sarcophagus that's now disintegrating. We're going to have that radiation around too. I'm, I'm just pointing out that what the human race does has been devastating to the planet. We burn 100 million barrels of carbon fuel a day. All that's a problem. But climate engineering on top of all that, again, has rendered the planet unable to respond to this damage. So back to your original question, if we shut everything off right now, we shut all forms of human activity off, including climate engineering, would everything bounce back? Short answer, no. We're through the guardrail. That would be like the the proverbial Thelma and Louise moment, for those that have seen that movie, as they crash through the guardrail, they're flying through the air on the way to the bottom of the canyon. That would be like saying, uh, we better put some brakes on the car. Too late, too late. We're, and so, again, I know that's disheartening for people who wanna think we can just hit the reset button, but you can't just undo the kind of damage that's been done in any time frame that matters. And what kind of time frames am I talking about? based on previous past extinctions that weren't nearly as severe or happening nearly as fast as what is happening now, the equilibrium periods were about 10 to 20 million years. That's a long time. So we will never again know the planet we have already, we have previously known, but could we salvage some part of the planet's remaining life support systems? We can't know unless we try, but we need to try fast because every single day counts at this point. You can't look backward at an equation of how we got here and then project that forward in a linear fashion. That That's not how this equation works. It's exponential. So once we reach this point, the changes are occurring so blindingly fast that we have precious little time. And that has not slowed down the climate engineers. They are ramping up weather warfare everywhere we look. Lahaina was absolutely cannot be separated from weather warfare. There was an ionosphere heater induced high pressure zone. and I, Laura, I'm not sure if you ever heard of the facility called HARP in Alaska, H-A-A-R-P. It's an acronym. It's, it's, it's very important. Your listeners can look that up and learn what an ionosphere heater is. It's a weapon of mass destruction that's sold as a benign research facility, which it is not. What does that facility do? It can, it can beam three and a half million watts of power into the electrically charged ionosphere that heats the atmosphere to extraordinarily high temperatures that pushes space up and down, pushes the atmosphere down creates a high pressure heat dome, Lahaina. So they created a high pressure heat dome north of Lahaina, which spins the upper level winds clockwise. South of Lahaina, there was a low pressure spin, which was Hurricane Dora, a very anomalous hurricane. They could have knocked out any time they wanted, but they didn't. Between those two counter spinning rotations, you have a wind tunnel, a wind tunnel that blew right on Lahaina. We have incendiary dust, those materials I mentioned earlier, aluminum, barium, strontium, Manganese, those are all incendiaries. They're used in demolitions, literally. So when you have that dust coating structures and the grasslands and everything around there, that once you have a source of ignition and you blow that at 80, 90, 100 miles an hour through those structures, you create a bellows effect, you incinerate everything. And so again, we have these incredibly unnatural conditions and the, the same has happened in Canada. You remember, uh, you're in BC, you remember when lit uh, Littleton, Littleton, Litton. incinerated. Litton, BC, yeah. Litton, Litton, yeah. Thank you. Similar scenario there. You had a high pressure heat dome there as well. You had 121.5 degrees, 0.4 degrees in British Columbia. It's, it's was completely off the charts, same mechanisms being used and they can blame it on nature. We see it over and over and over. So you're literally saying that uh, they're creating this very heated, a very hot temperature. Where would it be? Would it be like high up sort of, you know, a mile up or is it? No, okay, no. When they heat the atmosphere, that doesn't directly heat the surface, but it causes the atmosphere to expand in both right. directions up and down. When you're pushing the atmosphere down, you start compressing air below it all the way to the surface. That compressing, sinking air generates more heat and it keeps the heat at night from escaping back into the atmosphere. So the heat begins to build up more and more and more. So again, this is on top of the heating that's already been created from countless forms of human activity that are contributing to these layers of atmospheric gases that are 
trapping heat in the atmosphere, that is a problem. I acknowledge that fully, but climate engineering is sold as solar. It's called solar radiation management. You have the entire global climate science community right now stating on the record that we need to put jets. Think, think about this, okay? With everything you see, everything we're talking about, everything everybody else is seeing, jets spraying particularly in the atmosphere, we have the whole climate science community saying we need to do this. We need to put jets in the sky, spray particulates. It's going to look white. It's going to make the atmosphere turn white or dirty white. But that's not really what you're seeing, they tell us. You're not really seeing what you're seeing. We could, may, might do it someday, but that's not what you're seeing. It's complete insanity at this point. Of course, they're doing it. And the propensity of the public to, to deny this is, is mind-numbing. And let me back this up further. In our film, The Dimming, Geoengineering Watch, at tremendous expense and effort, in, into six figures of expense out of our pocket, we acquired a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration flying lab. We put top scientists in it. We took it to altitude. We sampled what heavy aircraft were emitting. We processed that sample at RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic University in New York, a world-renowned university, all on film, all on the record. We found exactly what we knew we'd find, climate engineering elements, starting with aluminum nanoparticles. Again, end of the debate. This is happening. People simply want to ignore it. And I'll leave with this. Is it any wonder, Laura, that the epidemic of Alzheimer's, dementia, ALS going off the charts because we are literally inhaling aluminum nanoparticles with every single breath we take? Right. So you said something a few minutes ago. You said they could have taken care of Hurricane, I think you said it was Dora, off of the Maui uh, area. Well, what would, do you mean that they could? do something to stop or, or move that off? They could eliminate that storm any time they want. They could eliminate the hurricane that just hit Florida now. They could, the hurricane suppression programs have been going on since 1947. U.S. military started in 1947 with Project Cirrus. They've been at this for so very long. And the technology absolutely exists. It's inarguable. So don't people wonder why with the record warm Gulf of Mexico, and I say record warm, it's off the charts. We have we had temperatures in Florida recently, 101 degree water temperatures. That, that's literally what the jacuzzi hot tub manufacturer recommends for their hot tub. 101 killed everything, fish, coral. But yet no hurricanes seem to spin up and damage the oil rigs ever. They missed on one side or the other side or the storm dissipates before it hits. We see it over and over. Is that just nature trying to preserve the oil rigs? No, of course not. It's the military industrial complex not ensuring that their oil drilling platforms don't get hit. So again, this technology is absolutely proven. What, what's on the screen now, again, the freeze fry scenario, you see the reds in the Western US, the blues in the Eastern US, that's a high pressure heat dome over the West, rotates the, the upper level wind currents and moisture up and over the lower 40 or the western U.S. and dumps that moisture on the eastern U.S. where they chemically nucleate it and cool the surface. That's a completely meteorologically unprecedented scenario of the west baking under record temperatures and the east freezing under record cold. That's not nature. That's that's climate engineering from top to bottom. So at, at this point, the degree to which the climate's being manipulated is off the charts. And, and why aren't the meteorological community speaking out? We have a an illegal federal gag order in the U.S. on the nation's weathermen, National Weather Service, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Why in the world would you gag the weathermen if you didn't have something very big to hide? Wow. Well, that says it right there. This is what they've done. They've they've silenced anybody who had you know something to you know show some data evidence to show regarding the whole COVID narrative that we've just been through. They want to keep you all quiet about that. So that that makes sense to me. So does that mean that weathermen who kind of study this thing, they can see that things are unusual or wrong or they can suspect things because of their experience and they're being told, like, don't say a word about it? Great question. So let's consider the so-called climate science community. Only two possibilities. They're either criminally ignorant of the very field of study in which we're told they're experts or they're lying. Take your pick. It's one or the other. And if I can back up on the CV-19 scenario, COVID-19, we have the world's most recognized climate engineer, Dr. Ken Caldera, former U.S. Department of Defense scientist, 
we we own an audio at geoengineeringwatch.org of him stating on the record what he did for the DOD was to design methods of spraying pathogens into clouds to infect the population below. We have two elements showing up in all our rain samples now, polymer fibers that I mentioned earlier and graphene. Both of those are used militarily for biological warfare to carry a pathogen from the cloud to the ground. What's that doing in our rain? Next, we have Kim Caldera now works for Bill Gates. We have Italian scientists that found COVID-19 attached to airborne particulates. And in the initial waves of the COVID infection, we had 85 countries infected in three days. That is indicative of an airborne dispersion. And we have, on top of all that, even as far back as 1977, we had the Washington Post, major publication in the U.S., publicized on the record that even up to that point, 1977, the U.S. military had conducted 239 open-air biological tests over innocent, unknowing U.S. populations. This is business as usual for them. The American public is, not just the American public, industrialized nations are completely asleep at the wheel with their iPhones and their football games, while the powers that be are conducting these operations for their own purposes. And at this point, they are cooling the herd. That is no question that's going on slowly but surely. And we have Americans and, or, and again, populations, industrialized, industrialized nations asleep at the wheel. Uh, they better wake up soon, Laura, or there's not going to be much, if anything, left to salvage. This is really scary. This is uh, like we're once again at the complete mercy of these uh, blazing idiots, it seems. But um, do you think that our governments know about this? Like in Canada, you've watched our fires. British Columbia has had record numbers of fires. It's been insane. And all kinds of people not only so upset about the, these fires, but the response of the government and the authorities. That's been scary as well. It should be. Any in any position of higher power, they absolutely know. I've had private meetings in Sacramento with Governor Gavin Newsom and his top aide presented data to them. They could not deny any of that data presented. Have they said anything? Zero, nor will they. They serve the matrix, period. And, and the same is true with Canadian officials. So let's let's look at what the former presidential advisor, Zygmunt Brzezinski, he's a presidential advisor to US presidents all the way from Lyndon Johnson to 2017 when he finally, thankfully died. He stated on the record, again, former advisor to U.S. presidents for a half century, he stated, with today's technology, it's far easier to kill a million people than to control them, quote, unquote. Now let's back up to President Johnson in 1962 on film and on the record. And this short clip is the beginning of every single weekly geoengineeringwatch.org national broadcast. It's commercial free, political free. No politics. Uh, that's on our homepage, geoengineeringwatch.org. But the first 30 seconds of that broadcast is a film clip of Lyndon Johnson, former U.S. president, stating that we had the power to control the world's cloud layer then in 1962, 61 years ago. And, quote, he who controls the weather controls the world. He said that then. Anybody who calls this a conspiracy theory now just simply has their head somewhere in the sand where the sun doesn't shine. The bottom line is... This is real. It's happening. It's a very near-term existential threat, not just to the biosphere in which our lives depend, but on every single breath we take. And, and, and we know this. We have peer-reviewed science study to prove now there is not an uncontaminated drop of rain on planet Earth, period. Peer-reviewed science study, North Pole, South Pole, Mount Everest, every single drop of rain is contaminated, not just with anything, but with PFAS forever chemicals. Climate engineering on top of that, those elements on top of that. So again, we are contaminating the fishbowl in which we live. We're not going to be here much longer if it continues. I I believe you. I I believe they're trying to to kill us. Uh, they've done it many ways. They they did it with this recent uh, COVID vaccine, and they're continuing. And they're going to do lockdowns and whatever that you know coming up. Uh, they're just absolutely insane, maniacal, crazy people, and. Yes. You know, um, I'm looking at this. I'll see if JT can put this up, but it says Greece wildfire declared largest ever recorded on the EU um, in EU record wildfires in Europe, in Canada, record low Arctic ice, record high global temperatures. How many more records do we need to break before we act on climate? Now, 
there is a problem that I see, and that is with the the climate people who are trying to get a lot of money for this issue, but they're saying, you know, oh, the, you know, we've got a big problem with the climate, but they base, they're basically exacerbating and causing this nightmare right now. They're taking us from the frying pan into the fire. Here's the bottom line. There is no legitimate discussion of climate anything from any perspective without first and foremost addressing the climate engineering elephant in the equation, which is making an already bad situation exponentially worse. So again, it's not, it's not a this or that. We've definitely damaged the planet. We're continuing to damage the planet with all forms of industrialized everything. But climate engineering is making all of it exponentially worse on, in regard to the ice, which again, you still hear people arguing about that, which is absolutely absurd. We have film footage of the of the cryosphere, the ice deposits completely disintegrating. Right now in Antarctica, there's an area of ice, of sea ice that did not form this year that's missing. An area of ice the size of Greenland missing from Antarctic sea ice. Why is that a problem? Because the polar regions are the air conditioners for the planet. When we lose them, we're done. We're done because the, the heating causes mass methane release. In fact, this would be a good image to pull up if you can. Siberian methane craters. You'll find it anywhere online. Shocking images. It looks like nuclear bombs went off. And that's the real methane problem. What do we hear, Laura? We hear the, the constant inference of cow flatulence as being the methane problem. And that's just simply to divide people, to make them think their hamburger is causing the biggest problem, which is not true. It's not good to cut down forests to raise cows. That's a problem. But the methane problem, the big problem, is methane that's thawing, releasing, and literally exploding into the atmosphere. That's the planet starting to respond to the damage done. This is the Bermuda Triangle scenario we've had for decades. Everybody's heard of the Bermuda Triangle and the ship sinkings. This is methane releases from the seafloor. The methane fields thaw, release, aerate the water like a bottle of champagne. The ship on the surface on, that's on top of that has no buoyancy, goes to the bottom intact. So this has been happening for decades, and climate engineering and the attempt to hide it is, is further fueling the process. And, and let me add this, if I can. If the sun feels really hot on your skin when you get clear day with no obstructions and you touch a surface of something that's scaldingly hot, that is a very, very ominous sign. It looks like a giant popped pimple. Those are huge craters. And that is methane that's thawing and exploding into the atmosphere. Why is that a problem? Because methane over a 10-year time horizon is 120 times more effective at trapping heat in the atmosphere than CO2. 120 times more. That's a, that's a very big feature, wouldn't you say, that literally exploded out of the tundra? Americans know no, People know nothing about what's happening there. Nothing. Wow. So, again, uh, we, we are on the fast track to a planet that won't support life, ozone layer, uh, declining atmospheric oxygen content, plankton populations crashing, insect populations crashing, wildlife populations crashing, crops crashing, forest disintegrating from every conceivable direction, Laura. Um, would earthquakes be something that could be created or formed by any of the stuff you're talking about? Another great question. Thank you. Short answer, yes. Let's look at Japan, the Japanese earthquake in 2011. So the weapon of mass destruction I mentioned earlier, Harp is the largest on the planet, but there's about 100 more ionosphere heaters. So that can bounce its signal off a now reflective atmosphere with the aerial dispersions from the aircraft can cause a reflection point that can bounce that signal back down into Earth's strata. And when they do that, when you microwave seismically sensitive regions, you can cause seismic activity. That's not scientifically disputed. So back to the Japanese quake, we have internationally recognized institution, in this case, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, citing on the record, your listeners can look this up, quote, extremely anomalous atmospheric heating for three days directly above the epicenter, and they can't explain it. They can't explain it because they're not allowed to explain it. Three days directly above the epicenter, and we know Japan was starting to ally with its regional partners. The U.S. didn't like it. So... What happened after Fukushima, the Japanese quake? Japan was right back in the U.S. hip pocket. Let's look at Christchurch, New Zealand, major quake that hit there as well. John Kerry, during an election, during a U.S. presidential election, which he was a part of, went to Antarctica, where there is an ionosphere heater, flew back to Christchurch, 
pulled U.S. diplomats out literally hours before the massive earthquake hit Christchurch. Same exact scenario happened in Haiti. All U.S. diplomats were pulled out, and less than a day later, massive earthquake hit Haiti. Is this all just a major coincidence? Look at Turkey. Look what just happened in Turkey. Literally days after Turkey's president thumbed his nose at NATO, they get leveled with massive earthquakes and with epicenters all over. Again, these aren't coincidences. These are weapons of mass destruction. The technology is absolutely clear. When you microwave a seismically sensitive region and you heat that, what happens if you put something in a microwave long enough and you turn the heat up for enough time? It's going to blow up. And, this, and the same thing happens in a seismically sensitive region when you microwave it. It's, it's very, very uh, established technology. Let me say that. Okay. So some of the... the um... The things that have come out, people online regarding the Maui fires, um, they're saying that people are painting their roofs blue. Is there anything that you can point to that is showing us that there can be laser targeted fires started and that a blue roof would stop or a blue or a red roof would stop that? Yeah, I, we've, we've looked at those reports as well. Again, are some being exempted from what's happening? We, we can't know that for certain. In regard to a directed energy weapon, do they have airborne platforms that could ignite a fire? Yes. Are we seeing massive weapons that are uh, torching individual cars and so forth through a smoke canopy? Laser physics makes clear that can't be happening. Laser anything does not work through any kind of blocked atmosphere, smoke particulates, cloud cover, can't work, doesn't work. So again, that part of the narrative, these individuals making these claims are not researching that, and they don't need those kinds of weapons to do what they did. I described earlier the method in which these, this fire in particular was made so devastating. And further, a ground-based directed energy weapon that's large enough to deliver that kind of punch takes about 18 semi trucks to transport. It's about a million and a half pounds. There's no airborne platform that can carry anything like that. So uh, again, bottom line, we hope that people focus on what we can prove and that's that climate engineering is key to all of these equations and arguably and climate engineering is weather warfare. I'll call it what it is, it's weather warfare. And again, it's just with the toxic elements we know of, it's biological warfare. But why would we think they're not using these elements as biological carrier platforms for any and every experiment they want to conduct on us? And when people still pretend that the whole COVID-19 scenario and the conclusion that that was absolutely carried out by those in power to uh, debilitate and cull populations, there should have never been a debate. We have peer-reviewed study in the journal Nature from 2015 that the gain of function characteristic had been in, engineered into the COVID virus with funding from Anthony Fauci's NA, uh, uh, NAIH, National Institute of Health, and uh, his, his other agencies. So we have peer reviewed study to prove that from day one, and yet it's still debated as if there's some question about it. So uh, again, those in power know the planet can no longer support populations, and that is not my opinion. That's a statistical mathematical fact. We have 37 countries descending into chaos right now because there's simply not enough to eat, 37. And that's going to escalate radically fast from here. So why would we think those in power are here to help us stay healthy and proliferate and continue to expand? No, they are very desperate to cull populations. And I would argue they're going to get a lot more desperate soon in the coming weeks and months when they can't hide the severity of what's unfolding and people start to wake up, they're going to do much worse. So in your estimation, I did see this other, uh, you know, a TikTok video with a guy that had a map of the world and there's all these fires. And, and in fact, there were so many in Africa that he's saying, are you guys OK? Like, is everything OK? Um, so in, in your understanding, do we have more fires than than we've ever had? Oh, exponentially more. And again, the fires many agendas and, and when I, I didn't mention like uh, for example in the Canadian fires uh, we have a report extremely important short report called wildfires serve geoengineering agenda within that report are screenshots of science study advocating for the intentional incineration of northern latitude forests 
to put enough particulate matter into the air to provide temporary cooling like a volcano does. It's, it's a way of mimicking the temporary cooling effects of a volcano, destroying the planet's last remaining life support systems to temporary cool, temporarily cool some regions. So when we saw the Quebec fire start, we had atmospheric pressure zone manipulation that pushed that smoke right down over the Northeast. Remember that? U.S. Northeast covered in smoke. And the same type of atmospheric pressure zone manipulation I described earlier, pushing the atmosphere down, can push that smoke down on the ground and hold it there. So it doesn't convect and rise. It holds it there over those populations. And we know it's highly toxic. That's making everyone sick as well. And we know that they're spraying on top of those smoke canopies because we filmed it over the Paradise Fire, very well-publicized fire in California. We filmed time-lapse footage of blanket spraying of aerosols on top of that smoke bank. What's that about? That can only be nefarious. So in regard to the, the fires themselves and the frequency, it's, it's off the scale. People blame it on bad forest management. That's nonsense. Climate engineering is the core to that. And I, I, I know about that arena too. My dad was an arborist. I, I, I managed a habitat preserve. I've done six cost share habitat restorations. I ran all of those programs, state and federal. But this is my arena. And, and that is not, although some management is necessary, usually when bad logging has been done, you have to go back and fix the forest. The problem is climate engineering at the core of this equation. So we have Siberia, regions of Siberia that have never been touched by human hands. The burn rate escalated between, I believe, 2005 and 2015. It escalated a thousand percent, 10 times more burns in areas that have never been touched by human hands. So yes, it's burning exponentially more than ever before. So um, I, I have a personal question for you. I, I, I guess at some point in your life, you decided you wanted to get into this field. Uh, did you understand what you were going to discover or like how has this information impacted you? Because I get pretty stressed sometimes. Like I, I got to do a lot of prayer time to, to get over the fact that I'm really understanding that we have a group of really crazy people in a lot of controlling positions in the world that are trying to hurt us in numerous ways. So how did that um, understanding come to you? When did you begin to have a real penny drop that we're in trouble climate wise? When I was still doing forest restoration and I began to, I saw this in the skies above when I built my off grid home as well. And I began to lose 60, 70, 80% of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were emitting. I knew that could not be condensation. And that's what started my rain testing. I found climate engineering elements in my rain. The elements continued to escalate. When I, with continued research, began to realize the ramifications were total, literally total. If these programs continued, we were on a very limited time frame. What was I to do but to face this issue? Once you know, you're not allowed to turn away. Not, not morally speaking, you're not. So I've been in this battle for over 20 years, nonstop, never left my post, nor will I until this is exposed and halted or until I meet my maker, period. So again, not a battle I wanted. I'm not an activist. I'm not politically oriented. I simply in good conscience cannot face myself in the mirror, look my children in the eyes or face my maker unless I stay at this post. And I intend to do exactly that. And, and Laura, you probably have had people ask you, why would they do this to themselves? If, if this is really going on, why would they do this to themselves? And that's commonly asked. And, and, and you just mentioned so correctly so the insanity of those in power. And that's, that's not just uh, metaphorically speaking. They're literally clinically insane. We know that from psychoanalysis that those in these positions of power have a common thread. And the common thread is this, a, a near total lack of comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. And we can see that with the 2,400 nuclear detonations that they carried out, contaminating the entire planet. They kept blowing off nuclear bombs just to see what would happen. Project Starfish, if your listeners don't know what that is, they can look it up. But that was the detonation by the U.S. military of hydrogen bombs in the magnetosphere, and they had no idea what it would do. They thought it might collapse the entire atmosphere. Did that stop them? No. They did it anyway, and they kept doing it. And we're still dealing with the repercussions from that today. We have Fukushima triple nuclear meltdown, no technology to fix it, no end in sight. Are we slowing down on the construction of nuclear power plants? No, we're, we're ramping it up. We have 442 online now. There's 60 more under construction. 
no comprehension as to the consequences of, of the seeds that's sowing. There's no sanity in this equation, none. And the population better wake up and focus on what matters, that they're here for a reason. Our maker didn't put us here to pursue personal pleasures till our last day. We're here for a reason, for a purpose, and especially with those with children. We owe our lives to those children. We owe it to them. This battle is not an option. It's an obligation. You're absolutely right, and that's why we do this. Uh, we have people like yourself on, and we try to get the truth out. But what can we do? Is is there a group like uh, of scientists such as yourself that is gathering this evidence and hammering it on anyone who will listen? I'm very sad to say no. And I know so many in academia that will not tell the truth. They refuse to tell the truth. They're going to protect their paychecks and pensions until there's nothing left, as if that matters. Uh, I've been in the field, USDA and California state scientists that I know personally, and they sheepishly look at me and say, what do you want us to do about it? I want you to go back and stand together, stand up and tell the truth, and they won't do it. Bottom line is, how do we deal with this? The only way forward is a critical mass of awareness, and that will take all of us and you do that not by pointing at the sky and ranting, but you you pass on credible data. And we make that available at geoengineeringwatch.org actually for less than our cost of printing and distributing our printed materials. And those are images of satellite uh, structure of clouds, square clouds, and frequency manipulated clouds. They're so shocking that you don't need to know anything about meteorology to look at that and go, something is very wrong. And when you pass that on to another, then you start a, a spot fire of awareness. And when they pass it on to two more, more awareness, and it starts to go exponential. If we could simply expose this, the fur would fly. We would have populations all over the globe understanding the severity of what we face, that there is no natural weather at this point, that there are an incredible amount of toxic elements falling from the sky affecting everything. If we could expose this, Laura, we would have a chance of stopping it from the inside out because I want to make this clear. Our U.S. military personnel that are participating in this are not being told the truth about what they're doing. They're being compartmentalized, told they're engaged in some planetary saving endeavor, which couldn't be further from the truth. Example of that, Asian Orange in Vietnam, where the pilots told you're going to kill your friend on the ground. No, not to mention the civilians. They weren't told. Or, or the nuclear blast, blast Laura, you've seen... The detonation, the old historical films, the bomb goes off in Nevada and the soldiers jump out of the trench and they actually run toward the blast site. All of them died, short deaths. We have a half a million people now known from peer-reviewed study. Half a million Americans died from the, the downstream effect of that contamination. Nobody knows that. They don't have a clue. So, again, if we could expose this, then we would alter the equation. And I'm not saying that we're out of the woods by any means, but we would alter the equation in the right direction. And that's worth fighting for. It really is. And so we do ask that everybody would just share this video, maybe share it to your local member of parliament, your um, MLA. Uh, it, you know, we have people all over the world, whoever you think has any kind of power to, at all, get them to listen to this, this video. It's not even long. It's, it's mesmerizing. Um, it's very, very shocking. And do you run with a group of people that are also in an understanding, like you, you guys all know, and you're trying to basically figure out, like you got people that are on your side, right? Yes, we do. Not enough. And what we hope from alt media is more acknowledgement of the other aspects of climate engineering, like the, like the engineered winter aspect of that. They're literally engineering winter in countless places around the globe. When you see big headlines of snow falling on the pyramids that has never been seen in 2000 years of history, that's just simply a photo op from chemical ice nucleation to convince people that the planet's not warming when in fact it's in total meltdown, climate engineering making it worse. So uh, we, we don't have a lot of people focusing on disseminating only credible data and we need that because a boat only floats if it's if it's watertight laura you wouldn't go on a long journey across the ocean in a boat that was mostly watertight would you no so there's either the truth or something other than the truth we need people to stand on credible data geoengineeringwatch.org strives to be the go-to source for that data and the single best one-stop documentary for this again the dimming is is the standard for a 
complete and comprehensive documentary on climate engineering operations. We, we made that film available, Laura, the day it was done for free to everyone because that our only goal is to stop this while it can still make a difference. So mm -hmm. uh, that's available on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Also the dimming, we have Air Force generals interviewed in that film, former Canadian Minister of Defense, former US presidential uh, cabinet members. We have former government scientists. I mean, that film is cracked with, uh, uh, packed with credibility. So the bottom line is that's where you can learn a little bit about the issue, share credible data from a credible source, help wake others around you and ask them to do the same. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I'm just before I let you go, I, I'm just in shock about your your comment. There's no natural weather at this point. I mean, none. When you, when you affect the weather, and this is why there's international treaties. We have Senate documents at geoengineeringwatch.org up to 800 pages long, U.S. Senate outlining the cooperation between global governments, even those with otherwise adversarial relations, China, Russia, US, they are colluding and cooperating on climate engineering because you can't engineer over your own country without affecting the entire planet. They're all involved. So at this point, if you think about the butterfly effect with you've heard of a butterfly flaps his wings in Brazil and something happens in uh, New York or North America, I mean, it's just the downstream ripple it causes but they are in fact engineering over the entire planet. There is nothing that we can say would have happened at that place at that time in that way without climate engineering. So again, the liability issue is incalculable. In fact, I would argue this will overturn the current paradigm. If we can expose this issue and the covert warfare that it is in fact waging on populations, unknowing populations all over the world, both environmental and biological, if we could expose this, we would absolutely alter the paradigm and that will take all of us. And it would bring everything else to the issue, to the surface with it, including COVID, what really happened on 9-11 and countless other crimes. If we could expose this one, it would drag everything else to the surface. So final question, how do you sleep at night? You have, you have a, a deep understanding of something that is literally uh, affecting the length of time that humankind can be, you know, on this. I, I believe in God, so I believe we're going to have, he's going to have, you know, he's going to have his way. But my Bible as a Christian actually says that unless God shortened the days, that there would be no one left. And when I hear you talking, and it also talks about earthquakes and, and whatnot, um, when I hear you speaking, I feel like that's kind of the prediction that we're talking about, that they literally can destroy our planet. So how do you handle that information and keep going? First, that scripture is accurate because without some intervention, um, statistically, mathematically, um, we're wow. very close to the end of the road. I sleep at night because I know if I've done everything I can in any given day, that I have to remember what's within my control and what's not. I focus on what is, and I turn the rest over to bigger hands. But if we all focused on what is within our control and didn't let it overwhelm us and didn't think that the end of our responsibilities is to visit a place of worship once a week, our responsibilities are much, much greater than that. And we're required to respond to this kind of knowledge until we're relieved of our post by our maker. So as long as I feel I've done everything I can on a given day, I, I let go when I sleep at night. But the next day, I get up, I do it again, and I'll continue to do that until I can't. Wow. You're amazing, Dane. Um, thank you very much for, first of all, your service to humanity, um, to us. I'm really grateful for you, that you are a voice crying in the wilderness. Um, I pray that we find somebody that's going to listen for this to this. And I also hope that you can come on again, because I think this is only going to get worse, because they are absolutely not going to stop. Nobody's calling them out on it. We've got a big problem. So what we can do is keep talking to you. So I hope that we can have you on um, as soon as possible and, and keep talking about this issue. Thank you very much. Glad to Dave. join you. Thank you. It's the same gratitude back to you. Without individuals like you and your courage to face this issue head on, we, we would not have a voice. Our voice would not be heard. So the same gratitude right back to you. It's a team effort. 
it's it's all of us working together that can yet make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Dane. Thank you so much. Wow. So, oh my goodness. So that is a um, that's a pack show. <laughs> You know, I knew it was bad, but Dane just opened my eyes. I kind of feel like uh, this is really big. I didn't know how big this was. So, yeah, I totally believed my friends in Alberta showing me those, um, you know, the streams in the sky. I totally believe that. Did I understand what Dane is explaining about their ability and how much they are playing with things? And do you know the other thing? He had a really good point. All through history, mankind, you know, at different times, if they're um, experimenting with something, you know, bombs or or whatever, they know, like, what might this do to planet Earth? And yet they still do it. Like, And the psychopaths, they, they don't have any empathy, not even for themselves. I mean, if you've got, think of, you know, we've all kind of come across a psychopath, right? We worked with one, we married one, I don't know, right? So you get to know that kind of person, what their mental state is, completely self-serving, completely unable to anticipate consequences for their actions, and lacking in human kindness or empathy, um, unable to see the bigger picture, sort of caught up in their power. What happens when a group of people with a lot of money, perhaps influence, bind together and they just don't care? And they're literally doing these crazy things that is harming our planet. And you know, they're going to try to get a lot of money out of us for this global warning, warming um, debacle while they're causing the climate problem. I'm going to send this video to several people. Would you mind sharing it, getting it out there? I usually don't. I always forget to ask people to share my videos. <laughs> I think we got to share this one. I really do. My website is laurelin.tv. Thank you for uh, supporting us. Thank you for helping us to speak the truth. I'm not afraid to tell the truth. Some people are. I am absolutely not. And it gets me in trouble. I have to say I've been in trouble for a good portion of my life for telling the truth um, and speaking out against what I think is uh, really bad decisions and bad ideologies, bad actions on the part of evil people. And at the very least, they're misled. I'm going to give some people are very misled, but at the true heart and the top of an agenda that is destructive to mankind, I really believe it's evil. It's pure evil. And that's what we're up against. So JT and I fight that every day with our little team. We can't do it except you help us. Thank you very much for your donations. Thank you for um, thinking that our mission is important enough to to, to spread the news. And we believe that we come to you uh, because God wants us to, because this is a calling. And we know he's the answer. We know Jesus is the answer. So we bring that to you every single day. So with your donation, you can go to Lauralyn live at protonmail.com if you'd like to do it through email. Uh, that's really easy. Also, Lauralyn live at gmail. Dot com. Some of you have that and you still donate through that way because I guess you've been doing it for a while, which is super awesome. Um, we appreciate it. Um, if you go to our website and click on that donate button, then uh, you have an option to pay by credit card, um, different ways that they have. And also you can you can support us anonymously. So I don't like it. I don't like you anonymous people out there not letting me know how to thank you. So I like to say it. Thank you to those who like to support us anonymously. You do get an income tax receipt. And I'm very grateful that we are serving. We are serving God first. And then we are serving our fellow man by being here every day. So I want to close with Matthew 24. Now, if you've ever wondered... Um, 
why this world is uh, going through some of these things and what Jesus had to say. In Matthew 24, it's mostly red letter. And red letters in the Bible means that Jesus actually spoke these words. And it talks about the last days. It talks about what is going to happen and the birth pains that are going to take place. So listen to this. It says, watch out that no one deceives you. So that means that people are trying to deceive us. It means if, if Jesus thinks he has to warn us that no one deceives us, it's because we will face a lot of deception where we will need to have the discernment of the ages to really understand this. And it says, mm -hmm, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and they will deceive many. Well, we've seen these people who you know, make people drink Kool-Aid or whatever. They're crazy, psychopaths. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Wow, are you staying unalarmed? <laughs> not easy, right? <laughs> Let's try to stay not alarmed. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, but do not be alarmed. No, it's all good. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. And this, this always makes me think, okay, so how close to the end are we really? You know, the end is still to come. It says nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. You see, this is why oh, I'm actually understanding it, JT. Like, this is this is why Jesus mentions earthquakes. You know, in all my life of reading Matthew 24, hmm, I've never thought, I, I thought, okay, the world's gonna maybe become more, you know, unstable, like the fault lines, you know, there's gonna be earthquakes. Jesus is telling you there's going to be famines and earthquakes in various places like they are going to cause them. Look at what's happening with our food. Look at, you know, what these people are doing and earthquakes. That's why I wanted to ask Dane about the earthquakes because of this scripture. So Jesus wasn't, he wasn't just talking about that the fault lines will become, you know, because, oh, maybe he didn't make the world right, you know, we're in danger because of the world. What if all these things that we've been facing, because Dane was talking about people doing this for like a lot of decades, and we've had some pretty horrific damage come because of earthquakes. I'm not the scientist, but apparently there's evidence in so, all these are the beginning of birth pains, it says. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. Well, I'm not certain what's going to happen in my lifetime or what the Lord is going to have, but I do know something. I am not afraid of death. I am not afraid afraid of the enemy because my life is hid with Christ in God. He's got the whole world in the palm of his hand. He is 100% in control. And that's how I sleep at night. That's where I put my hope. See you tomorrow. God bless. You know, it's not easy to deliver the truth of what our sick world is doing. But for some of us, we feel that we have no choice. Because if we are silent about these abominable things, then we are letting evil go unchecked and we cannot do that. For those of you wonderful people who are writing me and are sharing your encouragement, I am deeply grateful. Thank you for all the letters that you've been sending. Thank you for the donations and the support. I found out that in order to speak the truth, you have to become very, very strong. If you would go to my website at www.lauralyn.tv, you'll find all of the ways that you can contact me. Remember, my friends, all is well. All is well. Thanks for joining me.